and welcome to the next instalment from Ada Pulse. Ada Pulse is the channel bringing you news and all the projects in and around the Cardano ecosystem. Now today it is January and I want to talk about uh, the growth of Cardano in the whole of 2021. This is an article by Jeff from Swagpool and really goes into some real good details and metrics about what happened in 2021. This uh, article actually came out on the 23rd of December. Uh, so all the facts are current up until that point. But let's dig in. This is really good and you can really see the growth of Cardano. I'm Josh from ATM Stake Pools. Let's do it. Twenty twenty one was quite the year for Cardano. The accomplishments made across the blockchain over the past twelve months have proven that the growth and development have not slowed down. However, the price speculation from a small subset of individuals tends to drown out and distract the attention away from some of the noteworthy achievements. If we follow the metrics and data, the on chain analytics provide a different outlook for Cardano and why twenty twenty two will be another interesting year and in the evolution of the blockchain. So what's the social metrics? Anecdotally, to speak to anyone who follows the crypto industry closely, and they'll say that there are a few projects that have a larger following than Cardano. Take a look at the social metrics of the past year. The Cardano community has seen exponential growth and doesn't look to be slowing down as we head into 2022. Beginning of the year, the subreddit Cardano had roughly 95,000 subscribers. Now take a look at the graph here. Over the course of a year, that number has increased by 625% and eclipsed 675k Redditors by the time this publication came out. So let's compare that to Ethereum. Ethereum started the year with around 525,000 Redditors and at the time of the publication was 1.2 million, an increase of 228% over the past year. The Cardano community is relatively large. Twitter has become the stomping ground for many crypto enthusiasts and announcing developments for projects across the industry. When taking a look on Twitter, it becomes apparent that many prominent Cardano-focused accounts have sizable follower accounts. For example, the Cardano Foundation has 763,000 followers and IO has 235. If the preferred medium is Facebook, there is also a rapidly growing official Cardano group which already hosts over 214,000 members. The developments and updates are usually discussed at great lengths on this platform. It gives Cardano community members the chance to engage and interact with team members of specific projects or spokesmen of pillars within the community such as IOG, Emergo and the Cardano Foundation. Upgrades and developments. Cardano saw four major upgrades dating back to December of 2020. So Allegra, Mary, Alonzo and network parameter adjustments. The first being the Allegra Hard Fork Combinator HFC event. This upgrade to the network introduced token locking and the ability to include metadata in transactions. Token locking is a way of recording how a specific token is being used for a certain purpose. Explained in a bit more depth in this post by IOHK. Locking, in this case, means reserving a certain number of tokens for a specified period of time so they cannot be disposed of to gain a benefit, such as voting or running a smart contract. The second upgrade came by the way of Mary HFC in February. This event introduced the ability to create user-defined tokens, changing Cardano into a multi-asset blockchain. Some of the first tokens we would soon see after this HFC event would be Space Buds, Space Coins, Cardano Bits, and other explosion of Cardano non-fungible tokens, so NFTs. Next came the coveted Alonzo HFC in September. Cardano developers and enthusiasts have been awaiting the upgrade for quite some time. Alonzo brought core Plutus smart contract capability to Cardano and more deterministic method of transaction processing. With Cardano's unique extended unspent transaction output, EUTXO, say that fast, smart contracts can provide the ability to guarantee the cost of transaction execution and how the transaction will behave before it's submitted to the ledger. Lastly, the blockchain saw an adjustment to the network parameters, block size increase and increasing Bluetooth script memory units per transaction. These adjustments came months after the implementation of Alonzo and smart contracts. The blockchain began to see a sizable load as Cardano NFTs became increasingly popular and even bogging down the network at times. IOG chose to increase the block size by 12.5%, moving the block size from 64 kilobytes to 72. The next adjustment, the Plutus script memory units per transaction, was also increased by 12.5%. The effects of this parameter change were highlighted in an IOG post. 
An increase in Plutus memory limits means that they, developers, can develop more sophisticated Plutus scripts, or that existing scripts will be able to process more data items, increase concurrency, or otherwise expand their capabilities. So, wallet distribution and addresses. A critical aspect of dis discussing decentralization is taking a look at the distribution of the token native to the blockchain. As Ada is the native asset of Cardano, it's important to see the wallet distribution within the ecosystem. It's worth noting that one wallet does not equal one individual, and many people often have an abundance of wallets, but it does give some insights on the distribution and decentralization of a layer of one smart contract platform. Cardano reached two milestones that were widely recognized by the community and across the industry. The first being 2 billion wallets were generated across the blockchain. That's a pretty massive number in comparison to other chains. The other wallet milestone was that 1 million wallets were delegating and staking uh, their ADA to support the network. The latter accomplishment speaks of the notion of these wallets and their active participation within the protocol. Taking a deeper look into the data, the graphic here from Cardano Blockchain Insights gives a glimpse into the breakdown of address distribution. As of Epoch 309, almost 79% of delegated wallets hold between 1 and 10,000 ADA, or roughly 780,000 delegated wallets holding no more than 10,000 ADA. Looking at the other side of the spectrum, roughly 2,700 wallets, or approximately a quarter of a percent of all delegated wallets, hold at least 1 million ADA. New addresses and active addresses. Continuing to look at addresses, some more interesting wallet metrics coming from Into the Block. They've managed to track the daily new addresses generated as well as the daily active addresses. Into the Block identifies an active address as making at least one transaction on a given day. Into the Block analytics show in January, the newly generated Cardano addresses per day range between 15 and 30,000. Staying in that January, the graph also depicts the daily active addresses range between 25 to 50. We can visually see an increase in both of these metrics over the course of the calendar year. Both the number of newly generated addresses and active daily addresses peaked in November with over 304,000 and 485,000 respectively. Since then, those number have come down and averaged in December approximately 150,000 daily active addresses and over 75,000 new addresses, roughly 300% increase in both metrics. Transactions and block size. Transactions have always been a benchmark within the industry to illustrate the throughput, capacity and prospective capabilities of a particular chain. The metrics can also be somewhat misleading as all transactions are not created equally and some on-chain transactions carry more weight in some ecosystems more so than others. So check this graphic from Misari. On the 1st of January 2021, the daily transaction count on Cardano was 9,400 transactions. The average daily transaction count in January was roughly 13.5 thousand transactions a day. Fast forward to December, when this article was published, the average transaction count for December was approximately 96,000 transactions a day. That's an increase of 711% across the year. The peak of the year came in the 22nd of November, when 495,000 transactions were recorded in a day. Average daily block size. So the next metric pulled from Misari's analysis was the average daily block. The average daily block size remained fairly flat throughout the first half of the year. It wasn't until the implementation of the Alonzo HFC event, which introduced Pluto's smart contract functionality, and the block size began to see a sizable increase. The Alonzo HFC occurred on the 12th of December. The Masaru graphic shows on the 1st of January, the average daily block size barely ellipsed 1.2 megabytes. This trend continued with a few spikes around the Mary Hard Fork in February and another spike towards the end of May. However, the lead up to smart contract implementation was where the average block size began to increase drastically. At the time of the publication, the average daily block size was approximately 34 megabytes. The network saw its highest average block size on the 22nd of November at 53 megabytes per block. Native assets and dApps. After the Mary HFC, the number of native assets or tokens on the Cardano blockchain never slowed down. Check this out. Another milestone on chain was reached when over 2.5 million Cardano native assets were minted since the beginning of March and a record 69,960 assets minted on the 5th of December. Dapps. The ecosystem is no longer recognisable to those who have been tracking Cardano for several years. It's impossible to keep up with the multitude of applications, DeFi protocols and wallets coming online every day. 
It's an exciting chapter that awaits community members as it's been four years in the making and it seems like the ecosystem is on the cusp of delivering some dApps and protocols that will fuel innovation for years to decades. We'll leave it with this screenshot of the current landscape of dApps being built. Some are live from the Cardano Cube interactive map. Enjoy and let's see what the rest of 2022 brings for the Cardano community. So that's it for this episode. This is Ada Pulse and I'm Josh from ATM. The article can be found online. I'll put the link down below. But do like, share, subscribe. We really need your support. We just want to get news about Cardano and its projects out there. So do support us. We really do need it. And you can further support us by delegating to Swagzod or ATM. But until now, I'll see you next time. Thank you.